Hallelujah. Let's welcome our online church by the clapping of our hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we are going to do the last segment uh, of what we have been teaching, but today we are going to speak on overcoming the spirit of delay. It's the same thing. You can call it part three. You can call it that way. But uh, we're going to be doing the last segment <clears throat> of that series. Hallelujah. Next week, I'm preaching gateway to prosperity. Gateway to prosperity. There's a way to come out to access prosperity. Amen. Let's go to our main text, Exodus 13, verse 17 and 18. Exodus 13, verse 17 and 18. The Bible says there, Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near, for God said, Lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the sea, Red Sea and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 2 verse 14. And the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the valley of the Z was 38 years until a gener all generation, all the generation of men of war was consumed from the midst of the camp just as the Lord had sown. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the anointing that is upon the word of God. I pray that the word of God will be anointed. Ezekiel says, while he spake unto me, the spirit entered into me. Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, while Peter yet spake these things, the Spirit of God came upon them that had him. I pray that this will be our testimony today in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. For some time now we have been talking about delay. We have established that delay is a very bad thing. In fact, when certain things are delayed in your life, you stand a chance to miss many, many things that God would have wanted to do in your life. You can just imagine using our church plot, for example. If we had gotten the land five years ago, we could be sitting in a massive structure now. And there will be many, many people from everywhere who would have been transformed by us having ownership. Many, many people everywhere. There will be great things we are doing. Probably our television station will be operational by now. You can never know what we could have done if we were not delayed. So delay has a way of robbing people the very best things that God would have wanted to do in a particular season. When you look at women, there is a time in a season where a woman is fertile, where a woman can have children. Now you can imagine a situation where they are delayed to get married. Until that phase has passed. Only to be married when they have entered into menopause. Yes, the marriage will be good. It will be a blessing from God. But the delay 
would have robbed such a lady or a sister the blessing of having children. So delay is a very bad thing. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And so because of the things I want to share today, I want to quickly go straight into the matter. Is that okay? The Bible says here that when God was releasing the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, there were alternative routes, some of which were very short, that could have taken them from the land of Egypt to the land of promise. Very, very short. The Bible says it would have been shorter to go through the land of the Philistines than to go through the way of the Red Sea and the wilderness to meet with Red, Red Seas. There was so much thirst and hunger, so much tigers and lions and many things. The Bible says at the point they were being beaten by scorpions and by serpents. Imagine they had to go through a road that was full of many, many challenges. In fact, the Bible says that the group that left the land of Egypt, the men of war that left, they never made it to the promised land because delay has a way of making things die in the, pro in the process that should have been preserved. Hallelujah. And so, for the past few Sundays, we've been looking at delay as it is caused particularly by myself. By myself. The things we've been learning are things that challenge us to also do our part. Hallelujah. We learned that number one, delay can be caused by immaturity. When I'm not mature enough to handle what God is giving me, it may make God wait for a while until I'm ready to receive. Number two, we said that delay can come because of Egyptian mentality. The mentality of the world where you are not accustomed to the principles and the philosophies of the kingdom of God. Where you continue to reason and use the wisdom of this world to try and work the things of the kingdom. It is important and imperative that we flush out our system out of the principles and the wisdom of the world and load ourselves with the word of God. The word of God, the entrance of thy word of God brings light. It brings illumination. It makes us to see things in a different way than when we were in the world. Hallelujah. Number three, we discover that one of the things that can cause delay is the presence of the mixed multitude in the lives of the people of God. People that are not really for God. People that will befriend, but they have a different agenda. They are not really going where we are going. They do not really desire what we desire. Their, their presence in our lives is to discourage us. You know, there are people who will always remind you about your ex. You are trying to move on. They are always reminding you about the ex. Hey, do you remember 20 years ago that, that Samson? That Samson, the way you, But I mean, my friend, I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to serve God. I'm, I'm trying to believe God for something that God will do now. But the mixed multitude, they are very fond of taking us back to Egypt. We remember the fish. We remember the garlic. We remember onions and cucumbers, vegetables. We remember what we used to eat. Where there are no graves in Egypt, they are always constantly, you know, reminding you of your past life. He who makes you focus in your past wants to steal your future. You can never access your future when you are still caught up in your past. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, I press on towards the upward mark of the call of God. I choose to let go of Egypt so that I can access my Canaan. So the presence of certain people in your life 
is very dangerous. Sometimes there are people who knew you before you were anything. There are people who knew me before I was an apostle. When they meet me, they don't want to appreciate that the Lord has honored me and lifted me up. They, they will be continuously calling me with names from villages. And they are reminding me how I used to be a nothing. Ah, but look what the Lord has done. Will you not celebrate what the Lord has done? Why are you so much concerned about where I come from? Listen to me, church. You cannot change your past, but you will change your future. So people like that are not very valuable for you. My honest advice would be to let them go. Delete their number and block them. Because their duty in your life is to pull you down and to drag you in the mud. Somebody say, I hear. Say, I hear. Number four, we learned yes, uh, last week that one of the critical things that will delay us is disobedience to the principles of the word of God. Someone said the word of God. Exodus 19, chapter 19, verse 3. Exodus chapter 3, verse 9. I mean, chapter 19, verse 3. I'm interested in verse 5. But let's read up to verse 6 from verse 3. It says, and Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thou, thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Verse 5. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then... You shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Verse 5, now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandments or my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For the earth is mine. Someone said, for the earth is mine. Job 36 verse 10 says, he, opens the, he also opens their ear to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Disregarding the principles of God will delay you to access your promises. Hallelujah. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. These were the, the words of the, the mother of Jesus. In John chapter 2, they went to the ed, a wedding at Cana. The Bible says, and they ran out of wine in the wedding. And when they came to the mother of Jesus for a solution, he said, go and talk to him. He will bring you a solution. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whether he says, spill all the wine left, just spill, there will be wine in the pot. But this time he said to them, fill the pots with water. It did not make sense. We need wine. You are saying pour water. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So when they did what he said, the Bible says when they tasted the water, it was the best wine all of a sudden. Obeying God triggers the miracles of God. 
Obeying God shows your willingness to partner with God. Hallelujah. So if they listen to my instructions and to my commands, they are committed to listen and to do. They obey and serve me. They shall live their days in prosperity. And they shall live their years in pleasure. This shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I say it shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Your days will be full of prosperity. Your years shall be full of pleasure. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I say receive it in the name of Jesus. Number, 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 number what? Number five. We said one of the things that can delay you is lack of revelation. Someone said lack of revelation. Acts chapter 8, verse 30 to 33. Acts chapter number 8, verse 30 to 33. It says, so Philip ran to him and had him reading the prophet Isaiah. And said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he was reading, he said he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In in his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? Now, the man which the Bible says was an Ethiopian Enoch. These were the generations of people that descended from the queen of Sheba. Who came to see Solomon and learn so many things about God. When she went back to Ethiopia, she went and allowed the word of God to be preached everywhere. And over time, people became cold. But they still knew we need to go to the Holy Land to worship God. This particular man had come for that purpose. But the Bible says as he was in the chariot and was driving the chariot, scripture records he was holding the scroll. He was reading. But the Bible says he did not understand what he was reading. He was reading about Jesus, how he was murdered and killed, brutally so, how he died for our sins. But he did not have a revelation. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God took Philip, made him to overtake the chariot. And Philip asked him, Do you understand what you are reading? He said, I do not understand. There is nobody to open my eyes into the secrets of the things of God. There are times that many of us, we are full of knowledge but empty of revelation. One of the things you must pray this year is to say, Lord, open my eyes so that I can tap into the revelations of the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Where there is no illumination, we only walk into darkness. Where there is no illumination, the light of the word of God must be open to us so that we walk in the light of the word of God. You can come to church all your life and still struggle until the Lord by his mercy opens your eyes to the mysteries of God. In the story I'm reading, the Bible says, and this man, having been explained to a light shining in his spirit, he said to Philip, man, here is water. Why don't you baptize me now? And Philip said, do you believe in the Lord Jesus? He said, yes, I believe. Bible says, and they stopped the chariot and entered into the pool and he was baptized right there. He was saved because all of a sudden the light of revelation shone on his spirit. 
Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Revelation brings speed to destiny. Revelation is what places other people at the top in this life. Revelation. Light. That's what separates people. Revelation. Someone said revelation. Ask your neighbor, how much revelation do you have? Revelation or lack of revelation can delay destiny. You know, God told them, I am is coming with you. But along the way, they were still questioning. It means even when he said it, they did not know what is I am. They did not understand what is I am. They just had words, but there was no revelation in their spirits. Ephesians 1.17. Ephesians 1.17. I'm going to read this and go to another, another matter. I want to deal with two matters today. Hallelujah. Says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the God, this is a prayer. The God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. This it's, 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 praying for revelation is very necessary. That God will give it to you, wisdom and revelation. Look at verse number 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Ah, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Enlightened. It's like so that the scales can fall off from the eyes of your understanding. Hallelujah. Many people who are not saved today, it doesn't mean they hate God. It has not yet occurred to them. It has not, the, the light of God has not yet shone in their eyes of their understanding. They have not come to the realization and the reality of the love of God. The day it happens to them, they'll be the one inviting you to church. It takes revelation to access the things of God. It takes what? Revelation. I pray that wisdom and revelation should be given to you. May the Lord open your eyes from today. May your eyes be open into the secrets of God. May your eyes be open into the word of God. May you behold as in a mirror. May you behold as in a mirror. And when you Behold, may you be changed day by day into the image of the Father, into the image of the Son, into the image of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Revelation. It takes revelation to go ahead of others. There are businesses which are thriving because of revelation. There are families which are making it because of revelation. So I said, Revelation. Say, Lord, reveal your things to me. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So lack of revelation, therefore, can become the reason why you are delayed to access the promise. You know, sometimes when we give our tithe, our tithe like this, we are giving like this, people think we are fools. We are giving the money to that church. You are giving the money to that man. You are giving the money to that. You are, it, it, for them, it's ridiculous. I don't blame them. It's not given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I say it's not given to them to know. It takes the givings of God for you to have a revelation. 
when we begin to build the church, you are going to see things you have never seen. Some of us, we are going to sell plots and give money to church and to the work of God and to the kingdom of God. Some will sell one car and remain with one as we give towards the building of the work of God. But my God, we will be acting out of revelation. And when we begin to do that, we will begin to see God lifting us to dimensions we have never seen before. It takes revelation to access the secrets of God. Somebody say, I hear. Say, I hear. But today I want to deal with number six and particularly number seven. Uh, in the remaining 30 minutes, I want to deal with number six. Someone say number six. Let's go to Exodus chapter three. I want to read from verse 16. Exodus chapter three. I want to read from verse number 16. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying this? Is your life changing? Hallelujah. Says, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob appeared to me. I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have I have said I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will heed your voice and you shall come and you and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt. And you shall say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now please let us go three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Now there's a problem in verse 19. I want to deal with this problem in verse 19. Says, but I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in its midst. And after, and after that, he will let you go. And I will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go. That you shall not go empty handed. Number six. Sometimes there is a delay. Now I have moved from you. Because there are things I must deal with. The first five reasons. Require your employment. Your dedication to personal development, personal dedication, and being given to the work of God and the word of God and all those things. But the number six and number seven, I must preach today because there are also reasons why delay happens. Number six, delay happens because of lack of cooperation from others. Delay happens because of lack of cooperation from others. It's called human will. Delay happens because of human will. When they refuse to cooperate with God, it can bring about delay in your life. Are you here? The Bible says God categorically and clearly spec uh, 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 specified that I am ready to deliver you. It is in my will to deliver you. It is my desire to deliver you. 
And, and it was very clear that people wanted to be delivered. But there was a third person in the equation. No matter how much God wanted to deliver them, there was the third person in the equation. This is where delay can happen. Give me verse 9. Is that verse 9? That verse 9 again. 19, sorry. That 19 and 20. It's, it's very disturbing me. I'm disturbed. God wants to bless me. God is ready to bless me. I'm willing to be blessed. But there's another person in the equation who must cooperate with God for me to be able to enjoy my freedom. But I am sure, look at God. Why don't you kill the joker? I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. I am sure somebody is going to stand on my way. No, not even by a mighty hand. Ah, verse 20. Look at verse 20. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with my wonders, all my wonders which I will do in its midst and after, only after such torment and terrorization that he will let you go. You know, thank you, God bless you for, for scriptures. You know, you know, when you are a Christian, you need to really understand many things. See, because this thing I'm teaching you, you realize that your blessings, your breakthrough is not just in the hands of God. I, I, I'm not reducing God, but God says, I know that he will not even by a mighty hand. So there are things that though God is willing, God is ready and I need them and I'm praying and I believe God though I'm ready to receive them. There will be a pharaoh in the equation who can bring about delay. I said hallelujah. You know, I was talking to one of my daughters. She's very frustrated in her job. So I said, but the way you are working hard. She said, here's the problem. The people at the top, they can see that I perform. And I know that I perform. But the way our company is set up, until my supervisor recommends that I be promoted, or that there should be increase or increment to my salary. No matter how much they have come up with a structure that restricts them from interfering with the office of the supervisor. He said, I'm a tither and I know God wants to promote me and I'm ready to be promoted. But between me and the next level, all these years, there's a supervisor between me and the next level. Somebody says supervisor. Say supervisor. It's very important for you to understand that your miracles and breakthroughs do not only depend on God and yourself. There is always a third person in the equation. That must be addressed. Human will is a powerful thing. Some of you, you are here, we are praying for marriages, we are praying. Your husband is there until he cooperates and comes to say, I love you. You see, he must cooperate. He must come and say, until then, no matter how much God wants you to be married, no matter how much you are ready, we are at the mercy of this guy. We are at the mercy of this guy taking a step to say, I want to marry. The longer it takes, the more you are delayed. <laughs> this guy must speak. Today I command the wrath and the power of God and the influence of the spirit to come.
come on issues pertaining to the middle person in the name of Jesus I release favor I release favor I release favor I release favor in the name of Jesus somebody say yes See, this is very critical because when you are doing a tender, God is willing, you are a tither, you are a giver, you are a kingdom sponsor. And you have blessed that when you give me the son, Lord, I will give him back to you. Like Samuel and Hannah issue. But, 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 but there is somebody who is going to assess and decide on the tender. There is somebody. When you pray, you must not forget that person. That person can decide not to bring your documents for assessment. <laughs> that person. May the power of God deal with the hearts of the third person. May the people that are blocking you begin to release your things in the name of Jesus. Let them release your things in the name of Jesus. And some of them because they are stubborn and they will not release you even with the mighty hand. We transfer them in the name of Jesus. We move them to a different station. We offer them a new employment somewhere so that they can move, so that they can get out of the equation and that God will bring into this office the one that shall cooperate with the Father. Say yes. The third person. Third person. The third person. The third person is critical. The story I'm reading about Philip. The Bible says, and the Lord said to Philip, run, go and catch up with the chariot. It, the, the, the Ethiopian is at the mercy of Philip. You didn't know? The Ethiopian is at the, this one I've been reading about, he is at the mercy of Philip's cooperation. Philip can decide, I will not go. And the Ethiopian Enoch will go back to Ethiopia without having heard about the love of God, the love of Jesus. He will go without giving his life to Jesus and not being baptized. If Philip can say, I will not go. Some of you, there are people dying in the world that are at the mercy of your obedience. They are at the mercy of your cooperation. Until you open your mouth to tell them Jesus loves you, you have become the third person in the equation and you are not cooperating with God who wants to save the world. But you have decided to sit down and enjoy God and forget about God's people. Somebody's salvation is you away. Do you understand my English? It's you away. You know, last night when I was praying, the Holy Spirit told me something he has been telling me. Every time I go to where we have, we stay, another place we stay, many places, the, the Lord is always telling me to pray for our caretakers there. And every time I'll go and I will not do. Every time, yesterday night, the Holy Spirit rebuked me. He said that these people's salvation and healing is in your hands. As I was meditating on it, the Lord rebuked me. I came out of the house, went to them, and, and you'll be so amazed. I preached to them Jesus, and they knelt down, they lifted up their hand, and I led them to Jesus, and I laid hands upon them, and I realized I have been the king of Egypt. I've been not cooperating with God. That salvation was in my hands. Somebody said the third person. There is God, there is me, but there is this one. Yeah, and if this one doesn't cooperate, we will take long. We will take long. Hey, do you ever think about these things? If this one doesn't cooperate, 
It will be long. See, John chapter 4, from verse 1 and verse 2. Let's, let's read John chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Look at verse 2. Though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, verse number 3, Verse number three. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. He left where? Judea and went again to Galilee. This is the trip designed by this man called Jesus and his entourage. But look at the next verse. But he needed to go through Samaria. Now you need the eyes of the spirit to see there. There is a tweak in the agenda and in the itinerary. It was initially not in their agenda and itinerary to go to Samaria. They were going to Galilee. They took enough food for the trip. They were ready enough fuel for the trip. They were going to Galilee. But as they were leaving, Jesus received a text message from heaven that said there's a woman waiting at the well. Go and meet her and change her destiny. If Jesus does not obey and say my bags are packed, I'm ready. My GPS is set to go to Galilee. I will not go to Samaria. That woman will die without having encountered heaven. But Jesus, unlike many, cooperated with the Father. He decided that though he was going to Galilee, he changes the journey and goes to Samaria. And the Bible says, and there he sat at the well of Jacob. You must understand, he's sitting there. He's just sitting there because he's thirsty and hungry. Because the journey has become longer than initially intended. While he sat there, there comes a woman. The Bible calls her the Samaritan woman. She doesn't know she's coming to encounter. But somebody's obedience has positioned events. Such that she can have an encounter with destiny. Jesus' obedience was critical. It was critical for the destiny of this woman. How many people are not cooperating with us? But this year, on the year of possessing our possessions, I declare, I decree that those that are resisting us, that the Lord will soften their heart, that the Lord will soften their heart and give them the heart of flesh and remove the heart of the stone so that they can cooperate and do the things that they need to do for our sake. Say yes. Have you ever thought about it? If they don't cooperate, look, God is at the mercy of the king of Egypt. He says, I have a land flowing with milk and honey for my people. There are Canaanites enjoying there, there are Jebusites enjoying there, there are Hivites enjoying there, are people that are eating the fruits for my people. I'm ready now to take my people there, but there's a problem. Somebody will not cooperate. His heart will be hardened. As I'm preaching to you, the Lord is giving you prayer points. As I'm preaching to you, the Lord is giving you prayer points. Some of you, you must go and list such people and bombard the heaven on for the sake of these people to let go and let God for the sake of these people to cooperate with heaven so that heaven and the will of God can be done on the earth. Say yes. Say yes. Human will. Someone said women will. Let me read one verse and then I want to deal with the last, the last reason. Do you want a verse? Proverbs 21 verse 1. Proverbs 21 verse 1. Yeah. It says, 
It says there, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. I'm giving you a scripture to stand on. The paint to dip your brush on. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Like rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. Listen to me. No matter how much difficult they are trying to be, you must know that their heart is in the hand of the Lord. It is a matter of time. I say it is a matter of time. The Lord will turn their hearts in your favor. The Lord will turn their hearts in your favor. They will act in your favor. They will act in your favor. I give your king's heart to the end of the Lord that he may turn it in the favor of his sons and daughters. Listen, no matter how stubborn they are, the hearts. Let Makadabaya. No matter how stubborn they are, their hearts are in the hand of the Lord. Lebrase, Labraka, Lebreke, Lebrasha, Preta Baya Catabaya, Tataraya Catabaya, Rebo Shatabaya, Recata Boya Cataba, Recata Lebea Cata, Racadabaya Catabaya. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing. The heart of the king, they may not like you, but their hearts are in the hand of God. They may be jealous of you, their hearts. They may have all the arsenal, all the weaponry that they can use to oppress you, but what they don't know, their hearts are in the hand of the Lord, and He turns it to and fro as He desireth. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to skip the application because I want to deal with this. I want to deal with it. Someone said, deal with it. Number seven. Number seven. Someone said, number seven. You know, as I'm preaching, uh, there are certain applications people have decided to ignore them. But by the authority of God upon my life, and the presence of God in this house. And the word of God. In the name of Jesus. As they sleep tonight. May the Lord visit them. May they not be able to sleep. May they go to the office and pull your file. And put it on top. In the name of Jesus. May they pull your file. And put it on top. In the name of Jesus. Shout yes. Number what? Do you really want number seven? Are you sure you want number seven? Matthew 13, 27. I'm interested in 28. Matthew 13. Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 13, 27. It says, watch this. Watch this. I like this. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Say, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then, how then does it have tears? Verse 18, 28, sorry. And he said to them, An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them? My interest is in that sentence. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. 
Now, number seven, there are delays that come because of evil forces and satanic manipulation. There are some delays that come because of evil forces, demonic powers, and satanic manipulation. Yes. He said, an enemy. Some of you, when we ask you a question, why are things not moving for you? Your answer would be, an enemy has done this. Your delay is as a result of the enemy. You see, spirit, spirituality is real. Christianity is very spiritual. Not everything is at face value. Give me Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read this before I preach. Let's look at verse 10. I'm interested in verse number 12. Let's start from verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The next verse. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse number 12. For we do not, we do what? We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all things to stand. Stand, therefore. Never take things at face value. Some of you, peace in your marriage is delayed, but an enemy has done. Some of you, you are not able to have children. An enemy has done this. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers. We are fighting thrones. We are fighting against a terrible devil. Somebody say, an enemy has done this. An enemy. Some of us, we have delayed healings. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. We are delayed to enjoy the best of God. An enemy has done this. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 17 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 17 and 18. Very interesting. Very interesting. Are you there or you didn't hear me? 1 Thessalonians Thessalonians chapter 2 17 I'm waiting so that the people can see it it says but we this is Paul speaking but we brethren have been taken away from you for a short time in presence not in heart endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire but verse 18 will explain why there has been a delay. Therefore, we wanted to come to you. Even I, Paul, time and again. Ah, but Satan hindered us. Even the great apostle Paul, though he had desires of doing some things, the Bible records he was not able to accomplish them because the enemy hindered them. Satan hindered them. You should never forget that one of the major causes of delay is satanic, demonic, and very bad by nature. It's from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Look at Daniel chapter 10. We can start preaching from there. Daniel chapter 10, I think from verse 12. 
Daniel 10 from 12. I want to preach small, small from there. Are you, are you enjoying this? Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. The next verse, please. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Some people is 21 years. <laughs> it just depends what you are fighting. For Daniel, it was 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Are you listening to me? The last verse. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people. In the latter, your answer has finally come. But there was a delay. There was a traffic in the realms of the spirit. In the invisible world, there was a delay. You, you just wake up. You sleep. You wake up. You eat, you go to work. You don't know there is an activity over your head. You are frustrated about your promotion. Your business is not working. Your marriage is not working. You're, you, are, you are not finding a life partner. You are just frustrated, depressed, and crying, and rolling. Yeah, when I, today I'm here to tell you, wake up and begin to fight. Begin to fight. Take the fight into the atmosphere. Take the fight into the realm of the spirit. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are busy arguing with children and screaming at your children. Remove your eyes from this life and look into the realm of the spirit. Said I have long come from the day you decided to go on prayer. The father long answered. The answer has not been lending because there are evil forces over where you are. I'm preaching to somebody. Not everything is natural servants of God. Are you listening to me? There are things which are spiritual. You keep trying, things don't work. It's not normal. It's not, that's why when we declare fasting and prayer, you must cooperate and participate. Because some things are not natural. And can I say something also? There are battles that are not going to be won for you by the pastor. Because you are the only one who understands your life and your people. Ah, la, 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 la. until you take on the spirits of your village until you take on the spirits that you know and understand that the pastor does not understand unless until you rise up and upon my Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions deliverance proceeds precedes occupancy there shall be deliverance and holiness. And then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Some of you are just excited about the theme of the year. Some deliverance must happen. Some things must be broken off. Some chains must be broken. And today by the power in the name of Jesus. I am here to judge every power of the enemy that is fighting you, fighting your family and your children. I'm here by the power in the name of Jesus to wage war against the powers of darkness. An enemy has done this. The Bible gives us tools. It says, and they overcame him. That is Revelations 12, 11. They overcame him. Revelations 12, 11, please. 
they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death they overcame thank you they overcame someone said they overcame you have to know how to fight with the blood or how to fight using the blood that is one of the weapons given to us by God for us to overcome. When you pray, you must plead the blood over your case. You must plead the blood over your children. You must plead the blood over your husband. You must plead the blood over your business. You must plead the blood. It is by the overcoming power of the blood that we gain the victory. Say yes. And they overcame him by the word of that testimony some of you you are too quiet you you are too quiet there's nothing you are testifying but the bible says and you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee you must open your mouth to fight you should not entertain and welcome some of you have even personalized the problem Instead of using the word of your testimony to correct the issue. Am I preaching to somebody? You have stopped fighting. You have now started to agree with the adversary. But today, I declare, I decree you shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. I say by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony in the name of Jesus. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood that speaks better things. You must use the blood to fight the adversary. And stop agreeing with him. Acts chapter 10, 38. I'm closing. I'm closing now. Acts 10, 38. Watch this. I'm giving you another weapon. Someone say another weapon. Peter is preaching in the house of Cornelius. And he's telling them about Jesus. And when it gets here, it says, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. One of the weapons used against the adversary is the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit. You must speak the fire of the Holy Spirit. And release judgment over the powers of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Today, by the power and authority of God upon my life. I release the blood in your case. I plead the blood in your case. I declare, I decree. The blood speaks better things in your life, in your marriage, in your children, in your business, in your work, in your job. I release the blood. I release the blood. And I declare, I decree. That the hand of the Lord is upon you. I give this testimony. I give this testimony. The Bible says, tell the righteous that it is well with them. I am here to testify. It is well with you. It is well with you. It is well with your children. It is well with your parents. It is well with your job. It is well with your marriage. Say yes. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Says while Peter yet spake the Spirit came upon them that had him. As I'm speaking right now the Spirit of God is everywhere. The Spirit of God is everywhere. It is coming upon those who hear me. It is coming upon those who hear me. To fight for you. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost. And with power. And he went about doing good. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For 
God was with him. God is with us today by reason of the person of the Holy Ghost. And I release fire now over the works of the devil. I release the power of the Holy Ghost over the works of the enemy. I release the power of God over anything that is fighting you. I charge in the name of Jesus the power of Satan, the power of the adversary in your health, in your business, in anything that concerns your life. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Something's moving. Something's moving. It's like heaven on earth. your eyes lebra satala hola maya la 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 thank you lift up your hands lift up your hands lebra sakadabaya lebra dadarabaya kadaba lebra nananaya lift up your hands open your heart lebra sitala nani kadaya i want you to pray now God should face the third man in the equation. That God should deal with their heart. I want you to lift up your voice so that God will deal with the adversary. That God will deal with the enemy. Hey, and the devil withstood us. We wanted to come. Your miracle wanted to come. Your breakthrough wanted to come. But Satan withstood it time and again. From the day you set your face to pray, from the day you desire, from the day you pray, there was something going on in the realm of the spirit. The angel of Peshia. of Satan. I release your power to destroy the powers of Satan. May the Lord judge now. May the Lord judge now. May the Lord judge now. May the Lord judge the devil now and his works and his works and his works and his works and his works. May the Lord judge now. Judge now. Judge now. Satellite. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you for joining us today. Until we meet again next Sunday right here on this same platform. God bless you. Bye-bye.